Testing, one, two, one, two, three, testing. Testing. Pure spirit state 
of Yahweh. Now, uh, Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right with himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a super corporal being, that means having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now the shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in the divine revelation. Later on, this self same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walks the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, this book we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. He instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now this pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in the school to prove that everything in the universe operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten names of the school are as follows. Number one is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. Without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the power late in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. In the ages to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. In the ages to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And ten is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. This morning we have a prayer by Dr. Ari Ramirez. Our scripture lesson is Colossians, the second chapter. Our scripture reader will be Dr. Nanette Ramirez. And we have a selection of music after the prayer. Good afternoon. We'd like to come together and ask Yahweh our Elohim to give us some understanding 
some wisdom, some knowledge, so we go on to this age and help us to understand by giving us that revelation. And we ask this in your son's name, Yahshua Messiah. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Good morning, class. Good morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Old and New Testaments critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts revised by the late A. Petrina, the Scripture Research Association. I'll be reading Colossians, the second chapter. For I would that ye know, knew what great conflict I have for you and for them in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of Yahweh the Father and the Messiah, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order, and the steadfastness of your faith in the Messiah. As ye have therefore received Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior, so ye walk in so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after the Messiah. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh, the bodily form, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of the Messiah, buried with him by immersion, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of Yahweh, who hath raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that, have, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no one condemn you regarding sacrificial meal and drink offerings made on the holidays, new moons, and Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is the Messiah. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility, humil humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of Elohim. Wherefore, if ye be dead with the Messiah from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all not to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship and humility, and neglecting of the body, which have no value except to satisfying of the flesh. I have read Colossians, the second chapter. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 Good morning once again. Okay, uh, just a few words. Uh, Those people, you know, that I like to get on their soapbox out there and 
you know, there's a whole multitude, thousands of religions, okay? People call themselves Christians. Well, and they're so proud to be Christians, okay? They, 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 they put their trust in Jesus, Lord and God, okay? But they're proud to be Christians. They get out of soapbox. Well, if I ask you a question that would shake you right to your core, you know, and question yourself, okay, you call yourself a Christian. Where does Christianity come from? What do you know about Christianity? Are you Christian because somebody told you you're a Christian? Think about it. Do you know where your roots are? Do you know where Christianity roots are? Do you know where it comes from? Ask those questions to yourself before you get on your soapbox. Okay, because if you come across one of us, we're going to ask you that. Plus many more questions. It was done to me. I thought I was a good Christian or a Christian, but I, you know, I was quaking all the time in my boots because I thought I was breaking the law all the time, sinning. Okay, but when the question came to me, simple question, like we go into our moderation and we find out that Lord and God are titles, titles. But we call them names. How's that? Sounds like we're deceived. Yeah, but our grandparents, our grandparents, it, it doesn't matter. Titles are titles. Okay? And like I, I went before in one lesson, that we're told to go back to Moses. Okay? That is a principle we always got to remember. Go back to Moses. Why? Because that's the beginning. That's the beginning of our understanding of what this Bible is all about. Okay? Then we can find out where Christianity comes from, where all these religions come from. We got a, a chart here, we call it a map, Daniel chart. It goes all the way back to the first man and woman, right? Adam was made from the dust of the ground. And it's a descending pattern here, okay? Descending principle, okay? And we find out that the woman was beguiled by the adversary, not a snake, not a physical scissoring snake. Let's see this angel right here talking to the woman. That's what deceived her. But Moses, seeing it, looked at it and called him a snake, old dragon. See, you've got the snake slithering all the way out of the garden, okay? And after they're kicked out of the garden, Adam and his wife, or Adam and Eve, okay? And this map goes all the way down to these empires. All the way down to these empires. Down to when it was switched over from pagan Rome to papal Rome. Rome was the last empire to rule. Okay, it was turned over from this pagan because they believed in all these uh, gods and worshiping and stuff, and they made it a religion. Okay, Holy Roman Catholic Church of Rome. Okay, once you start digging in and researching these things, you ought to shake it to your core. So next time you get out of your soapbox and you want to talk about Christianity, know something about it. Know something about the roots, where it comes from. Okay? That's what I have to say for this morning. And there's a lot of scriptures, just like we read in the second chapter of Colossians. Now you can start understanding what the apostles are talking about. Man's uh, laws and ceremonies and commandments okay but uh, that's what this, this what the school is all about research going back looking at the scriptures 
okay, following the rules that are set up by the Holy Spirit through the, through the prophets and the apostles. Okay, so without further ado, our next, our first speaker will be Dr. Will Williams. Now, the first speaker talked about this chart here. 
See, these represent principalities and powers. And made a show of that, triumphing over them, making a show of them openly. How did he do that? He died on the cross. And on the day of his, of his crucifixion, what happened? The sun went dark, right? And uh, earthquake. the earthquake happened. I mean, there were, there were things that was, I mean, he made a show of them openly. Right? And then he was buried, right. and then he resurrected the first day of the week. See, triumphing over the powers of darkness and of death. Triumphing over, this is him triumphing, triumphing over these principalities and powers. His death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension. And then the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Okay? Keep reading though. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect, mm -hmm. or in holy day, of the new moon, or of the Sabbath. Okay, now, so now let nobody judge you in respect of this. Why? Because he performed these 613 ordinances and brought them to an end. Right. So don't let nobody judge you about, oh, did you eat the Lord's Supper? This week, but have you been baptized in water? You know, did you circumcise your children on the eighth day? So you don't let nobody judge you in these things. Okay, keep reading. Which are a shadow of things to come. They are a shadow. See, this is a shadow of things to come. Right. See, and I'm pointing here. The New Testament written in the heart and mind. They are a type and shadow of things to come. Read. But the body is of the Messiah. But the body is of the Messiah. In other words, the body of the Messiah is, is what's casting this shadow. Okay? Keep reading. Let no man beguile you of your reward mm -hmm. in the voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, mm -hmm. intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Okay, so now he says, don't let no one be God. Now, where have I heard that word before? <laughs> See? Oh, I heard it back here. Right. See, here's Eve being beguiled <laughs> by Lucifer. See, he says, don't let nobody be God. See? Selling your reward. See, Satan beguiled her into thinking that by eating this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, she would become something she already was, but she didn't know. He said, You'll be just like Elohim, not realizing she was already like Elohim. Right. But because she was taken out of the man, see, she was taken out from the protection of the covering of her husband and made subject right. to vanity. Okay? But keep reading. And not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment mm -hmm. ministered, mm -hmm. and knit together increased with the increase of Yahweh. Read. Wherefore, if ye be dead with the Messiah from mm -hmm. the rudiments of the world. Now, if you be dead with the Messiah from the rudiments of the world, or the rudiments of the age, which is this law, <laughs> the cardinal witness, is the rudiments. See? Keep reading. Why is the living in the world are you subject to ordinances? Now, why living in this age, mm -hmm. this present kingdom age, which is a spiritual age, why are you still subject to these ordinances? Right. Read. Touch not. Don't touch these ordinances. Taste okay? not. Don't taste these, these dinners, these Lord's suppers. Don't taste that. Handle Don't try to handle, see, these things. Don't try to get water baptized, tied up. Don't try to handle these things. Why? Which all are to perish with the use In of... In other words, to put it quite plainly, you will die. Right. Simple as that. You will die trying to do these things. Because they're not valid right. in this age and in this dispensation. Okay, read. Which are all to perish with the use of In other words, anybody who uses this stuff, you will perish. 
Right. You'll perish with the music because that's not the rule in this age. See, as I said, it's a spiritual age and it's a spiritual dispensation. But read. After the commandments and doctrines of men. After what your preacher told you. Right. Or what your rabbi told you. Or what your imam told you. Or what your guru told you. Or what your sensei told you. Or your, or your, your dean. <laughs> you know, it gets like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, irregardless of that. Read. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom in will worship. I said, no, it, 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 doing this stuff, you know, it looks like it has, you know, wisdom and will worship. Like, for example, uh, uh, you know, like I know back in the day, I'm sure they still do it, some of the people, but I remember when I lived up at the Mississippi River, they used to go down there and baptize people in the water because they want, because it's a strong river and the currents is running. And so by baptizing them in a strong current, the water would wash the sins away. <laughs> you know? I mean, really, that's how they thought. Okay, but see, but, then, but it just shows you the concept of a man. And listen, is that the end of that chapter? No, it's not the end of that. Well, the Keep verse, going. What, what's which it things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship uh -huh. and humility and neglecting of the body. Not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. All it does is satisfy the flesh. That's what this does. It does satisfy the flesh. It doesn't do anything for the spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. For the inner man. It doesn't do anything for that. Right. Okay. Now, as we said, these cardinal ordinances, okay, and they point to him because he's the one that's causing the shadow of these ordinances. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? See, well, let's get John 5.36. John 5, 36. Mm -hmm. But I have great, greater witnesses than that of John. Now, see, now, John, he's talking about is John the Baptist out here. And he says, I got a greater witness than this guy. Look, this guy was a spectacle. I mean, he was out there screaming at the top of his lungs, Repent ye, repent ye. The kingdom of Yahweh is at hand. And when, when Yahshua came along, see, he pointed Yahshua out and said, that, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh that taketh right. away the sin of the world, as he was walking down the river. Man. And John, and look, and the people, see, the scribes and Pharisees didn't like John the Baptist, but the people, they considered John the Baptist to be a prophet indeed. Okay? But now Yahshua says, I have a greater witness than this guy standing in the middle of the Jordan River wearing a camel hair suit. You know, having honeycomb and dried locusts for lunch. You know, I got a better witness than that. Read. For the works, for the works which the Father hath given me to do. Hello. I'm sorry. For the works which Father hath given me to do, finished. The same works well, I do. Try it again, because that, that sounds confusing. Just take your time and okay. just read it again. For the works which the Father gave me to do. To finish. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what I'm saying do. I, I know. That, that's, that's what's throwing me off. <laughs> so I'm reading it afterwards. I'm reading ahead myself. For the works which the Father had given me to finish, uh -huh. the same works I do, uh -huh. and they bear witness of me mm -hmm. that the Father has sent me. <laughs> All right. Now the works that the Father has given me to finish. See? Mm -hmm. The same works I do. Well, what was he doing when he got circumcised, he did ceremonies, he did the Passover, he got water baptized, sacrificed, taken in the law, tithing, 613 ordinances that he performed, see? Right. And they point to him. Right. See? They all pointed to him. Okay? And it says the same thing, so that, that these works, they said the Father has given him to finish. Mm -hmm. Not to start, not to uh, initiate, but to finish. Okay? Jump down to 39. Ye search the scriptures. Now he's telling them, look, you search the scriptures. Now the only scriptures they had at that time was the Old Testament. Right. See, books like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, they didn't exist. 
the letters of Paul, they didn't exist. Book of Revelation, they didn't, they didn't exist. Right. John, you know, Timothy, Titus, none, Peter, none of that, none of that existed. The scriptures, the Old Testament, and he said, you search the scriptures, for in them you, you scribes and Pharisees, think you have eternal life right. because you know what's in the scriptures. However, read. And they are they which testify of me. They testify of me. See, in other words, the whole gamut of the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, talks about him. So, in other words, when you read about Adam, you're really not reading about Adam. Right. You're reading about Joshua. Mm -hmm. When you read about Noah, you're not really reading about Noah. You're reading about Joshua. When you're reading about Abraham, Melchizedek, you're not reading about them. You're reading about Yahshua. Right. See, when you read about Moses and all the prophets, see, you're not reading about them really. You're reading about Yahshua because it's all testifying to him. Right. In fact, everything they did was based on Yahshua appearing to them. Because, see, he's the one. Let's go to the first chapter of Colossians since you wanted to read that so badly. They didn't get that gift. And get, I think it's, is it 1 and 9? Colossians 1 and 9. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. No, I'm sorry. Go, go up. Uh, it says, the first cause of all creation. What was that, what was that at? Is that 10? Is that 15? Or? I know it's in that what chapter. What is the image of the invisible? What, what, what help? 15, I don't have my Bible. 15? 15? In uh, King James. 1 and 15, mm -hmm. who is the image of the invisible Elohim mm -hmm. and uh, cause. Come on now. Uh, the first cause. Thank of you. I don't want to. Well, I had to, it was all crossed off and written over. Well, I don't know. Anyway, the first cause of all creation. Okay. All right, this is the first cause. All right, and this is Yahshua. And see, and he appeared to everyone and told them what to write. He told them what to write, and then he came along, see, he came along and performed everything that he told them to write. In other words, the Old Testament is the autobiography of Yahshua the Messiah before he appears here. Okay? Uh, am I? That's just a signal. Yeah, I got up. Yeah, I got up. I got a pivot, you know, you know, so the signal can come out of the middle. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so that's his mission. The mission of John the Baptist and Yahshua Messiah. John the Baptist's mission was to point him out. Right. His mission was to fulfill the law and the prophets. Specifically these carnal ordinances, but I'll have you know that he's performing and fulfilling 4,000 years of people, places, and things. Okay? Keep reading. Where are you at? Uh, 16. Fifth, uh, the, the, the fifth chapter. I'm sorry. Go back to John. Okay, go on, John. Yeah, John. Okay, uh, John. Uh, five and four. Yeah. But you will not come to me that mm. you might have life. Uh huh. I receive not honor from men, mm -hmm. but I know you, mm -hmm. that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. Mm -hmm. I am come in my Father's name. Mm -hmm. And you receive me not. I say, I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. But read. Let another come in his own name, him you will receive. And look, and everybody receives that. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, I mean, they, I mean, there are millions of people that have received the name of Buddha. Well, Buddha's not a name, it's a title, really. Right. It means the enlightened one. But they received it. Millions of people. Millions of people receive Confucius. You'd be surprised how. Confucius philosophy permeates in Asia, you know, or Allah, or Krishna, you know, they come in their own name, you receive them. Jesus, you come in your own name, come in your own name and say, well, I don't believe, I believe in myself. Yeah. I am a God. <laughs> you know, come in your own name. See, instead of, instead of coming in a name that's going to give you salvation, you know, you can come in any other name you want. But here's the difference. This is the only name where salvation is literally in this name. 
There's no salvation in anything else. Okay? Keep reading. 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another uh -huh. and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Mm -hmm. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Mm -hmm. yeah, Mo you trust Moses. And they, and they did. I'm talking about the scribes and Pharisees. There was sex. They loved the Pope. Right. Mo and Moses said, la, 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 la. and Moses said, you know, la, la, la. You know, they were they were good. They they you know, and then they would break off into extemporaneous oratory. You know, well, you know, well Moses would not have done this, and Moses, you know, and, you know, and we sit in Moses' seat, you know, because there's seventy of us, just like there were seventy elders back here that saw the shape of fire from Mount Sinai. Okay, but we. For had ye believed Moses, mm -hmm. ye would have believed me, mm -hmm. for he wrote of me. Mm -hmm. But if he but if ye believe not his writings, mm -hmm. how, ye, how shall ye believe my words? But see, now, if you don't believe his writings, then how are you going to believe my words? Okay? Because Moses wrote of me. See, and to this day, a Christian cannot explain to me how Moses wrote something about Jesus Christ. Right. I don't care what version of the Bible you have. Show me whatever version of the Bible you use, Moses writing something about Jesus Christ. It just isn't there. You're not going to find it. But Yahshua, you're going to find it back there. You'll find out about Yahshua. Moses wrote about Yahshua, who was the same Yahshua back here that was the same Yahshua here that died on the cross. See, because if he's going to fulfill it, then you have to see where he's instituting it. Okay? Now, I hadn't planned on going this way, but it just seems like <laughs> Here I am. Okay. I was going to get into something else, but I'm, I'm kind of glad to kind of go this way a little bit. This, the choice this is a, not yours. This is a bit, I'm sorry, what? The choice is not yours. Oh, okay. It's nice to know. <laughs> now, I, I want to a good scripture to start with. Um, go to six uh, Matthew seventeen. Uh, I don't want you to read the whole thing. We, we may come back to it, but I just want to read this one 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 little excerpt. And no, I do not want one. I want uh, and what? nine. Read nine. Like I say, we may come back to this chapter. Seventeen and nine. Hello, somebody. Matthew seventeen and nine. And he entered into a ship and passed over. Matthew seventeen and nine. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahshua charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. All right, now, that's them here, right. coming down the mountain. All right? And, it said to, and, he was, and he told them, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again right. from the dead. Now, you ask a preacher that. He can't explain that. Right. I haven't ran into a Christian preacher yet that can explain that, that scripture. What does he mean by being raised from the get dead again? Well, that would mean that he lived before, died before, resurrected before. Okay? Now, to really understand what's happening here, he said, go back to Moses. Now, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay, let's start with Genesis 12 and 1. This, this gets a little bit ahead of Moses, but it, it, it leads into what we want to try to talk about in a minute. Genesis 12 and 1. Now Yahweh had said unto Abram, mm -hmm. Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Mm -hmm. 
and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. Mm -hmm. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All right. Now, Abraham came from Ur of the Chaldees. We have it on this. I'm showing you where this is Mesopotamia. Right. That's where Ur of the Chaldees is. It's, it's like right in here. So he had to leave, and then he followed the Euphrates River. And then cross the Euphrates River and then come down from the north into Canaan land. Alright? And he walks the length and breadth of Canaan's land, but never set foot on the promised land. Okay? Now, Genesis 15 and 12, because I have a slide. Genesis 15 and 12. And when the sun was going down, mm -hmm. a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Now of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, mm -hmm. and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Okay, so now that was told to Abraham. Now here's the point we're trying to make here. Get uh, Galatians 3, 16. Now, see it says 400 years, and also get Acts 7 and 6. Maybe you should read 7 and 6 first. Shall ye bear your iniquities? 
even forty years, and ye shall know the withdrawal of my promise. All right, now a day for a year, a year for a day. That is called prophetic time. Okay, a day for a year and a year for a day. This is what was assessed to the Israelites. The Israelites sent twelve men into Canaan's land to spy it out. Ten came back with a not so favorable report, and two came back with a favorable one. But the people believed the unfavorable report, and it took the, the spies forty days to spy out this land. So Yahweh punished them a day for a year, and they ended up forty years out here in the wilderness. Okay. We have the other one. Psalms 90 and 4. Uh -huh. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, mm -hmm. when it is past, mm -hmm. and as a watch in the night. All right, now that's time with Yahweh Elohim. A thousand years is as one day, and one day is as a thousand years, okay? See, for example, here. See, according to the days of creation. We have the sun, moon, and stars that was created according to Moses' vision on the fourth day. The S-U-N is a type and shadow of the S-O-N. Right. So if the S-U-N comes in on the fourth day, according to Moses' vision, in four days, uh, like, will be a thousand years as in one, uh, a thousand years is as, is as one day, then that would be four thousand years. So Yahshua, to reflect that, he has to come into the four thousand year. Okay, do we have a Second Peter, yes, Second Peter uh, yeah. 3 and 8. Mm -hmm. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, mm -hmm. that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, mm -hmm. and a thousand years as one day. Read. Oh, that's it. Good, good enough. All right. That's a thousand. That's just to confirm right. what we read in Psalms. Okay, now we have Genesis. What was it, Genesis? Two and one. If you got a holy name, I think. Or well, well, just read whatever it is in there. Genesis two and one. These are the origins of the heavens mm -hmm. and of the earth mm -hmm. when they were created in the day mm -hmm. that Yahweh Elohim made the earth and the heavens. Okay, created in the day that Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. All right, in the day of eternity means that time. As we measure time, which is by the movement of the celestial bodies, begins and ends within the realm of eternity. Okay, now I just thought I'd bring all that out. Now the reason why I did that, because we're going to focus on the middle one. A thousand years is as one day, and one day is as a thousand years, which we already explained. Yahshua the Messiah coming in the four thousand year. Well, if that be the case, see, and look, zeros are placeholders. You can, either add, you can either subtract them or you can add them. Alright? Now, in this case, we got what appears to be a discrepancy. Alright? So what we're trying to show is that it's not the 400 years and the 430 years. At the end of 400 years, this is where Joshua the son of Nun appeared down here in Egypt. And he appeared to be 30 years old and he was there for 30 years. Okay? Now, if that be the case, Joshua the Messiah, see, see, if he's the fulfillment of all these right. things, and maybe I should have that read. Um, Matthew 5, 17. Just to have that, just to, I mean, we could have it all read, but, but I just want to at least have one read just to show the word fulfill, right. fulfill. Matthew 5, 17. Uh-huh. Think not that I am come to destroy the law mm -hmm. or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Or to fulfill, see? And, the, and see, the word fulfill means to bring to an end. That's a promise. It also means to perform. Right. Because to bring something to an end, you have to perform it. Okay? Uh, go ahead and finish that. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one yod, or the smallest part, of a letter shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. In other words, not one is dot and I cross and T. Not one jot or one tittle from the law will pass until all be performed right. or fulfilled, performed and brought to an end. Okay? But now my point is if he's bringing it to the end, then you have to see where he is instituting it. All right? And so this is why we're trying to show you who was back here with Moses. 
Because Moses, because he said Moses wrote of me. Now who was back there with Moses? Jesus Christ? No. His name was Yahshua, right. the, the son of Nun. And, and look at the play on words, Nun. The word Nun, N-U-N, means Nun, zero. Like none, none after the flesh. Right. See? And he appeared down there at the end of 400 years, just as Yahshua appeared at the end of 4,000 years. See, we just, the zero. See, the principle is the four. Okay? Now, now, if that be the case, uh, I'll move it down. And let's see. Joshua, son of Nun, appears at the end of 400 years. Joshua, in the fulfillment, right. he has to appear at the end of 4,000 years. As I said, zero is a place where the principle is the fourth. Okay. Now, as we said, Joshua is 30 years old. All right. Let's get uh, Luke. I think it's three. 23, I think. Luke 3.23, and Yahshua himself began to be about 30 years of age, mm -hmm. being, as I suppose, the son of Joseph. All right, so he was about 30 years of age. That's when he started off his ministry, to my Yahshua Messiah. And look. This is when he came to John the Baptist. Go to Matthew 3.13. Matthew 3.13. Then cometh Yahshua of Galilee to Jordan unto John, to be immersed of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be immersed of thee, and comest out of me. And Yahshua answered and said unto him, Permit it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. See, that's a big word, big phrase, fulfill all righteousness. We told you what fulfill means, to bring to an end. All righteousness, for a person to be righteous at that time, they had to be able to perform right. these 613 ordinances. And since nobody could do that, then there was none righteous. No, not one. Okay? So now that's what his job was. So he said he was to fulfill. And look, and he's being baptized by John the Baptist. That in itself is a fulfillment. What is it a fulfillment of? 1 Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, mm -hmm. and were all immersed unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, mm -hmm. and did all eat the same spiritual food, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that went with them, and that Rock was the Messiah. That rock was the Messiah. Even Paul recognized right. he was back there with them. That rock that went with them was the Messiah. That was Yahshua. Okay? Now, get, uh, yeah, we're going to have to go back into the scripture now. Now, Yahshua's 30 years old. Let's just get this scripture. Get uh, Exodus 23 and 20. Exodus 23 and 20. Mm -hmm. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Mm -hmm. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. My, my name is in him. 
What do you mean? Well, what is my name? Right. My name is Yahweh. What's the, what's the name of the angel that's in that cloud? Right. Yahshua. Because he said, my name is in him. Mm -hmm. See, there's no J in the Hebrew alphabet. Right. So Joshua would really be Yahshua. Okay? I'm trying to show you that Yahshua the son of Nun and Yahshua the Messiah are both one and the same. One is instituting. The other is fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, we read that in, in numbers about uh, the 40 years. There were 40 years in the wilderness. I'm talking about the Israelites. See, because they didn't believe the good report that was sent out. And so they were punished a day for a year. 40 days it took them to spy out this land. So they were punished 40 years in the wilderness. Right. Yahshua's got to fulfill that. Matthew 4 and 1. Matthew 4 and 1. Mm -hmm. Then was Yahshua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness mm -hmm. to be tested of the adversary. Mm -hmm. And after he had fast 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Now he was out in the wilderness being tested by the adversary. Mm -hmm. See, because the Israelites were out here for 40 years being tested by the adversary. So now that brings you to 40 right there. Okay, now get I think it's Joshua, the book of Joshua. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's 24 and 12, I think. It, I know it's the last chapter in Joshua. It's 24. 20, not 29. Um, Joshua 24 and uh, 29, yes. 29. Okay. And it came to pass. Mm -hmm. After these things, that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of Yahweh, died being a hundred and ten years old. Now, Joshua was hundred and ten years old when he died. Now, let's just look at this. We have what we call here, this is a Moses chart, or a migratory pattern chart. Egypt, we will have the court roundabout. Wilderness of Sinai will be like the holy place. Canaan's land will be like the most holy place. Joshua spent 30 years down here in Egypt. Right. Then he was baptized in the cloud and in the sea unto Moses. We read that. Then Joshua spent 40 years out here in the wilderness of Sinai. Moses died, and then Joshua took over. So then how long was Joshua up here in Canaan's land? Well, if he was 110 years old, if he was 70 years old when he came into Canaan's land, and he's 110 when he dies, that means that he spent 40 years for the conquest of Canaan's land. And here's the miraculous thing. Joshua fought for 40 years and never got a scratch on him. Okay? So now that 40 here, see, you add that up, that's 110 years with Joshua, the son of Nun. Okay? Now, Joshua's got to fulfill, and look, get Deuteronomy 34 and 6. Let me try to show something here. I hope. Deuteronomy 34 and 6. Uh huh. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab. Five. Go, go up a verse. So Moses, a servant of Yahweh, died there in the land of Moab according to Yahweh's According to the word of Yahweh. Oh no, it's be seven then, has it? So keep reading. Keep reading. Okay. And he buried him in the valley of the, of the land of Moab, over against Beersheba. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. Mm -hmm. And Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died. Mm -hmm. His eyes was not dim, nor his natural pores abate. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Okay, now they wept for him for 30 days. Now he, he's dying here just before they crossed the River Jordan. Right. Moses is buried here at Mount Nebo, mm -hmm. but it's on this side of the Jordan. Right. All right? So now they mourn, the Israelites mourn for, for Moses for 30 days. Okay? There's a reason why for this 30 days. 
of weeping and mourning for Moses was, was ended. Okay. All right, after 30 days. Mm -hmm. Now, get Joshua. Uh, I think it's uh, Joshua 1 and 10. Joshua 1 and 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land. But Yahweh your Elohim giveth you to possess it. All right. So now, after they mourned, Moses is dead for 30 days. The Jordan River opened and they crossed. But they prepared the victuals for three days. Right. So now that's 33 days right there, just before they crossed the Jordan. See, that's a principle. See, see the Jordan River, let's just draw a line, is likened to the veil in the tabernacle. The same veil that was rent in twain at Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. All right? And he was 33 years old. All right? So, the tw so, so now that's rent in twain. All right? And so now after 33 days, they, this veil is written, talking about the Jordan River, and they cross over. And then Joshua's up here for 40 years in the conquest of Canaan's land. After they cross the River Jordan. Well, after Joshua the Messiah takes off the flesh. See, of his death, burial, resurrection. See, death, burial, resurrection. See, that's the veil. His body is the veil that's written in twain. And then he's got to see another principle of 40. Acts 1 and 2. Acts 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that, he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahweh. All right, 40 days. Now that was after his right. taking off the flesh, just as Yahshua the son of Nun spent 40 years in the conquest of Canaan's land after the renting of this veil, the Jordan River. Okay, get it? Mm -hmm. All right, but here's the thing. Here's, here's Joshua died in 110. Here's Joshua fulfilling Joshua at 110. See? Why? See, to understand that, see, we have to go back into the scriptures. Let's get Exodus, I think it's 48. Is it 48 and 10? I'm thinking. And see, you'll, you'll understand better, I hope. Exodus, what is it? No, I'm not sorry, not Exodus, I'm sorry. Genesis 48. I'm, my apologies. My apologies. It's Genesis 48, I'm sorry. Um, apologies. What did you say this Genesis 48 and 10? 9. Oh, 8, 8, 48 and 8. Start there. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Uh huh. Now, so now Israel, who is Jacob. Israel. Right. He's on his deathbed. So now he's he's laying up here. <coughs> and, and Joseph, who lived in Egypt, he had got married, married an Egyptian woman. He he's already got a couple of sons. And so now, like the obedient son he is, he wants to bring his sons up to Israel or Jacob so that he can bless them. You know, bless them to give them the blessing of the of the firstborn. See Joseph, when you look at it, you know, the family, Joseph came out of a family of 13. Right. There were 12 boys and one girl. All right, and Joseph was like number 11 when it came to the boys as far as the age. They were all older than him. However, because Jacob had two wives, he, he had children, he had 12, 13 children by two wives and two, uh, two handmaidens, the handmaiden of each wife. He had children by them. Okay? Yes. How many wives are they allowed to have? Well, Yahweh only said one. You know? <laughs> but, but, but Yahweh, you know, allowed it. But, but this was before the law. 
came about. This was before the law of Moses, you know, so people, you know, they did what they wanted. They had one, two wives, you know. Jacob had two wives, you know, but out of those two wives, that's how the 12 tribes of Israel came out. All right, and I'm going to show something about that as well, because there were this there was a modification that was made after they came down to Egypt. Right. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, I mean, as far as Yahweh is concerned, one man, one woman. However, you know, try telling that to Solomon. He had seven hundred wives and three hundred concubines. But but that but that's another reason for that. You know, which I won't have time to get into today. All right, but yeah, uh, where was I at? Uh, Joseph. Joseph had two wives. His two sons. No, Joseph, 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 Joseph did not have two wives. He had two sons. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. A little reading will. I tell people all the time, read the stories. All right. Uh, so he's got two sons now in Egypt. Talking about Joseph. All right, and he's bringing them up to Israel to be blessed, okay? And he brings up, uh, keep reading, wherever you are. And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, mm -hmm. whom Elohim hath given me in, his, in this place. Mm -hmm. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Mm -hmm. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, mm -hmm. and he kissed them, and embraced them. Mm -hmm. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not hoped to see thy face. Mm -hmm. And lo, Elohim hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, mm -hmm. and he bowed himself mm -hmm. with his face mm -hmm. to the earth. Mm -hmm. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, mm -hmm. and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand. Okay, so now that's what he did. So now, to tell I'm Joseph. So Manasseh is here, so that my right hand could touch on his head, because he's the elder. Right. See, and that's what Joseph wants, because see, what I wanted to say was, if I got distracted, uh, <laughs> was that Joseph, even though chronologically he was the 11th son, but because he was he was the firstborn son of Rachel, right. who was Jacob's second wife. Rachel. See, and he was the one that Jacob truly loved. Right. See, see, he was the one Jacob truly loved, and that, uh, and he was the firstborn son of Rachel. Mm -hmm. So that's why Jacob loved Joseph. I mean, give him a coat of many colors, and all. I mean, he was he was the son of the, of the woman he loved, Rachel. He, t I mean, Leah. <laughs> he tolerated, though he had more kids by her, but Rachel was the one he really loved. And so Joseph was the firstborn son of Rachel. All right, so now he's just want to carry on the tradition. This is my firstborn son, Manasseh. Father, put your right hand up here and bless him. Okay, but this is what happens. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, mm -hmm. and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, mm -hmm. and brought them near unto him. See, remember, remember we, we read that, that Jacob, you know, his eyes was going bad, it was dim, so, you know, he's laying up there, you know, it's just okay. Keep going. And Israel stretched out his right hand. Now, he stretched out his right hand, which... You know, which Manasseh is right in front of the firstborn of Joseph. Manasseh's right there. Ephraim's over here. So now. And laid it upon Ephraim's head. Instead of doing it like this, he did like this. And with his hand over and stretched it over and put it on the younger child's head. And what? Who was the younger and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly. Mm-hmm. For Manasseh was the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And he blessed Joseph and said, Elohim before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the Elohim which fed me all my life long mm -hmm. unto this day, mm -hmm. the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads and let my name be named on them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them swarm as fish swarm in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon 
the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. Mm -hmm. And he held up his father's hand mm -hmm. to remove it from Ephraim's head mm -hmm. unto Manasseh's head. Mm -hmm. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father. See, not so. In other words, he grabbed his hand off of Ephraim's head and did and put it on Manasseh's head. Read. For this is the firstborn. This is the firstborn, pops. Read. But thy right hand upon, put thy right hand upon his head. Put thy right hand on his head. Because see, the right hand, that was the blessing hand. You know, the, right. My right hand man, the right of the firstborn, and all that. So, no, put it on the firstborn said, Pops. Read. And his father refused. See, they refused. And said, I know it. I son. know it. I know it, my son. I know, I know it. it. I know. Read. He also shall be a people. He shall also be a people. What do you mean? He's going to take your place, Joseph. That's why you never hear about a tribe of Joseph. You hear about the tribe of Manasseh. Why? Because Manasseh took Joseph's place. Read. And he also shall be great, but his younger brother shall be greater. His younger than brother he. will be greater than he. Why? Because where did Joshua, the son of Nun, where did he, what tribe did he come out of? Well, there were 12 tribes. And look, Ephraim, he became a tribe too. Who did he? Whose place did he take? Well, he took the place of the Levites. See, maybe we, we got time, maybe we'll get to it. See, the Levites, they were given this tabernacle. When they came into Canaan's land, they were given 448 cities to occupy. They, but they were not given a part of land. But Ephraim took the place of Levi because their purview was the tabernacle and in time, the temple, once it was built. See, so Ephraim took their place, okay? Now get numbers. 13 and 1. Start there. Okay. 13 and 1. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, Send thou men mm -hmm. that they may survey the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Okay, now. If you remember, we told you earlier that 12 men, these are the, the list of the 12 men that were sent to spy out this land. Right. Okay, see, a ruler from every tribe. All right, now jump down to verse 8. And of the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun. Now see, now from the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun. Okay, see, Hoshea. See, see, that's who Joshua, the son of Nun, was. He was Hoshea. Everybody knew him as Hoshea. Only, only Moses knew him as Yahshua. And we'll show that in a minute. But just to show another point, jump down to uh, 11th verse. And of the tribe of Joseph, namely of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi. Okay, you see, of the tribe of Joseph, namely the tribe of Manasseh. Okay. See, because Manasseh took Joseph's place. Okay, that's why you don't, that's probably the only place you'll hear about a tribe of Joseph. Because now it's the tribe of Manasseh. He took, just as Jacob said, he's going to be a great time too. He, he's going to take your place, Joseph. But now jump down to uh, 16, verse. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to survey out the land. Mm -hmm. And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun, Yahashua. Yahashua, see, which means Yahweh the Savior. Yahashua means Yahweh the Savior. Yahoshua means Yahweh our Savior. See the difference between Ha and Ho? <laughs> See? Okay, so now, and look, go back to Genesis uh, 50th chapter. See, because uh, Joseph, see, he was shown that, and this is this is something else Joseph was shown, 50 and 19. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, mm -hmm. for I am in the place of Elohim. Fear not, fear not. No, I'll try that again, because that should be. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I mm -hmm. in the place of Elohim? See them purported. 
the verbs and adverbs, they, they, they make a difference. See, for am I not in the place of Elohim? Yes. What do you mean? See, Joseph was the one down here who was in charge of the granaries during the great famine down here. See, and he interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And Pharaoh made him in charge of the government, second in command. Okay, but he's a type of Elohim. See, Elohim or El Shaddai means the Almighty Provider. And Joseph was the Almighty Provider because he was in charge of the granaries. And the whole world was in a famine. So in a type, he was El Shaddai. So he was, am I not in the place of Elohim? Yes, he was. Keep reading. But as for you, uh -huh. ye thought evil against me. But Elohim meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Okay, now, that's what Elohim did. Set him up as a, talking about Joseph, set him up as a type of El Shaddai. Okay, now jump down to uh, 24. And Joseph said unto his brother, uh -huh. I die, Read. and Elohim will surely visit you. Now he says, I die, but Elohim will surely visit you. Remember, he had said, look, am I not in the place of Elohim? Right. All right. But now he's telling them, Elohim will surely visit you. Read. And bring you out of this land. And he's going to bring you up out of this land. Read. Unto the land which he has swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, mm -hmm. and ye shall carry up my bones from hence. Then, get, don't leave my bones down here. Right. See, the bones, that's a type of the inner man. Right. Don't leave my bones down here in Egypt. Do not leave my bones in corruption. Mm -hmm. When you leave, take me with you, because I want to go home too. Okay? Go ahead. So Joseph died, being 110 years old. Oh! 110. You see that? I see the connection now with Joshua, son of Nun? See? And here's Joshua, he's fulfilling it. Okay? Now, let's get, I think it's Leviticus 25 and 5, I'm thinking. Let's try 25 and 8. Leviticus 25 and 8. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee mm -hmm. forty and nine years. Mm -hmm. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hollow the fifteenth. No, it's not. Fiftieth. I'm sorry. Fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Okay, good enough. All right, now jubilee. Now, this law was given to them while they were still in the wilderness of Sinai. Right. But they could not execute that law until they got into Canaan's land. All right? So when they came into Canaan's land, 50 years after they crossed the River Jordan was when they celebrated their first jubilee. But remember, we told you that for the first 40 years, Joshua fought for the conquest of Canaan's land. Okay? And then when he died, Ten years later would be their first jubilee. Ten years later, uh, I'm back in the little Dickens. All right. Ten years. Ten years later would be their first jubilee, and that would, when you add that on, that brings you to 120. We read in Acts how Joshua tarried on earth for 40 days, and then he ascended. And then 10 days later, he poured out the Holy Spirit after his ascension. You know, he ascended, at the end of 40 days, he ascended. 10 days later, he poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of 
Pentecost. So now you add that over here. That gives you 120. We just read in Deuteronomy how, how old was Moses when he died? 110. Moses? Oh. You can try it again. 120. 120 years. So that's him picking up Moses. See, he's picking up Moses, Joshua. Who else? Noah preached for 120 years. He's picking them up. Up here in Canaan's land, the United Monarchy, you had Saul who, who ruled for 40 years. David who ruled for 40 years. Solomon who ruled for 40 years. This was a United Monarchy. After Solomon, they broke up. Right. Ten, ten tribes became the kingdom of Israel. Two tribes became the kingdom of Judah. Right. But prior to that, they were unified for 120 years. Okay? So he's See, fulfilling every job. Now. Right. John and Tittle. He's, that's Joshua fulfilling John and Tittle. Also, it's showing you Joshua, son of none. He's the one who instituted Right. Instituted. See? He's the one who instituted this. Look, let's get Exodus 24 and 1. Just to show you the point. See, he's the one who instituted it. He was the one who gave the law. So he would have to be the one to fulfill the law and move it out the way. Exodus 24 and 1. Uh -huh. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses said, alone shall come near Yahweh, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Okay, now Moses was told, alone and by yourself, when you come up this mountain. Right. Now go to eight, uh, 9 and 10. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. Mm -hmm. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Mm -hmm. Also they saw Elohim, and did eat and drink. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone, and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of Elohim. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. All right, now, wait a minute. I thought at the beginning of the chapter, Yahweh told Moses, come up alone and by yourself. But now here, Moses saying, tarry ye here for us. Where do you get this us from? Are you, are you disobeying God? No. Because see, he was, because Joshua was the one who invited him up in the first place. Remember, he was that angel that was in the cloud that we read earlier. See, if I, if I invited one of y'all to come, you know, come over to my place and we, you know, you meet me on the corner and we walk up to my place together, you're still coming by yourself even though you're walking with me, because I live there, all right? And that's the same way here. Joshua lived in this cloud, so he's inviting Moses up, so Moses is still going up by himself. See, but it's letting you know who Joshua, the son of Nun, really was. Right. See? Because he was the one who transfigured before Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, the seven elders of Israel. How do I know that? Because in fulfillment, he transfigured before the disciples back here. That's a fulfillment. See, this transfiguration is a fulfillment of this transfiguration. Transfigured for what? Joshua, son of Nun, because he went up in the cloud with him and transfigured before him and showed Moses the vision of the heavens and the earth. Uh, I'm not doing the time. Okay, I need to get going. I, I want judges just to show you because we. Uh, because we said that uh, Yahshua, you know, lived before, died before. Yeah, I want Judges 1 and 1. Judges 1 and 1. Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass the children of Israel as Yahweh, saying, 
Who shall go up for who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? Okay. Now, this was after the death of Joshua. Right? right? See, after Joshua lived 110 years. Then after the death of Joshua, this is what they did. Okay? Who's gonna go up? Now we the second chapter in Judges. Two and one. And an angel of Yahweh came unto from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt mm -hmm. and brought you into the land which I swear unto you. Now, see, now I made you. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who, who, who did that? I made you. Right. See, I made you do that. See, now, this, now, remember, this is after the death of Joshua now, right? Now, this angel comes back and says, you know, wait a minute, I was the one that made you do that. Well, what angel are you talking about? Remember that angel in the cloud back there? Mm -hmm. See? Keep reading quickly. Yeah, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you into the land which I swear unto you, your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you, and ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Mm -hmm. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Wherefore I said, I will not drive them out from before you, and they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. And it came to pass when the angel of Yahweh spake these words unto all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept, and they called the name of that place Bochum, and they sacrificed them unto Yahweh. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. Wait a minute. I thought Joshua was dead. I thought he was dead. We just started off as it was after the death of Joshua, this is what happened. Well, wait a minute, well, I, well, well, what happened? Well, he died, and it got up out, and it came up out of the grave, and it told the people, it said, why, why, why haven't you obeyed my commandments? See, he lived before, died before. Now we can go to the 17th chapter of uh, Matthew. We'll clean it, we'll tie it up. No, uh, uh, I'll read right now. no, 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 that's okay. Yeah, just read, uh, yeah, Matthew 17 and 1. And after six days, Joshua taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. Mm -hmm. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Mm -hmm. and, an and then answering Peter, and said unto Joshua, Sire, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles. Now why is he saying that? Right. Because, see, this is a fulfillment of what happened up here with Moses. When Moses went up here, he saw the visions of the heavens and the earth. He's up here 40 days. First seven days, he sees the vision of the heavens and the earth, and the other 33 days, he sees the inner workings of this tabernacle. So Peter's just echoing that. Oh, well, you know, let's make three tabernacles. Why? Well, Moses saw a tabernacle back here. One is instituting, right. the other is fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Make, it, make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Mm -hmm. While he had spoke, behold, a bright light overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. Hear ye him. And the disciples heard it, and they fell on their faces, and were greatly afraid. And Yahshua came and touched them, and said, Arise, be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Yahshua only. Mm -hmm. And as they came down the mountain, Yahshua charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, and to the Son of Man, be risen again from the dead. All right, be risen again from the dead. And we showed you that was Joshua, son of Nun. He was back here. He was the one who instituted. See, they didn't know who he was. See, but he was the one back here that, that instituted. He was the one that gave the law. It would have to be that way. He gave the law. He, he's, he's the one who appeared up here. So if he's instituting it, then he would have to be the same one to fulfill it or bring it to an end. Okay? All right, now, again, these carnal ordinances. See, let's get Romans 2, 2.14. 2.14. 
how much time we got. I have about maybe 10 minutes left. Romans 2 and 14. Mm -hmm. For when the, the Gentiles, which have not the law, mm -hmm. do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Okay, now, Yahweh never told the Gentiles to do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Not a thing. You're not going to find anywhere where Yahweh told the Gentile to get water baptized or do right. circumcision or suppers or ceremonies, sacrifice. Yahweh never told the Gentile to do that. They took it upon themselves, you know. And look, and a lot of the stuff that they do are very similar to what's in this law of cardinal ordinances. Thinking that they're, you know, they're, they are pleasing their God or goddess whichever the case may be, but Yahweh never told them to do that. However, we've got over here, carnal ordinances restored. Now, Yahshua the Messiah fulfilled carnal ordinances and moved it out the way, but it wasn't until, it wasn't that much time later when people began to reintroduce carnal ordinances back into the, uh, into the mix. Get uh, Acts 15, I don't have time to get into it today, maybe next time. 15 and, uh, yeah, 15 and 1, we'll, we'll read that, just to give you an idea, because, you know, as the first speaker brought out, where did all this Christianity come from? We're trying to show you the elements of it, according to the scriptures, how it come about. Acts 15 and 1, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and mm -hmm. said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Mm -hmm. When therefore Saul and Barnabas had no small dis dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Saul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the congregation, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the nations. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the congregation and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that Yahweh had done with them. But there rose up a certain of the sect of Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needed, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. Okay, good enough. Now that's what happened. And I have this illustration here. We won't get to it too much. But here's, you know, these folks. You know, in AD fifty two. Right. The council at Jerusalem, the controversy at Jerusalem. See, and look, it, it said that there were Pharisees who believed. Believed what? They believed that Yahshua was the Messiah and that Yahshua resurrected from the dead. Because the Pharisees, in their doctrine, believe in resurrection. Right. right? See, they were one of the few sects that did. They believed in the, in, in the, the principle of a resurrection. Right? What they didn't understand was that Yahshua the Messiah had to fulfill right. the law of Moses and move it out the way so that, you know, you will be justified in the spirit. But they didn't see that. They saw Yahshua resurrected, but they did not see Yahshua fulfilling or bringing to an end these cardinal ordinances. Otherwise, they would not have said, well, these Gentiles, they can't get off scot-free like us. You know, they got to do these cardinal ordinances and suffer just like we did. That's what they said. Right. <clears throat> but yet, jump down to the part where Peter stands up. Where was reading. Uh, seven. Seven. And where, oh, where Peter? Uh, seven. seven. And when there had been much disputing, uh -huh. Peter rose up. And see, now there was dispute. In other words, they, they got to an argument about this stuff. And then here's Peter here. He's rising up, read. And said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago Yahweh made choice among us, that the nations by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. 
And Yahweh, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye Yahweh to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of Yahshua the Messiah, we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnaba and Saul, declaring, what miracles and wonders Yahweh had wrought among the nations by them. Okay, in other words, you know, they, they listen to what they had to say. Because the, the nation, meaning the Gentiles, right. who they were out preaching it. And they were preaching, you know, I'm talking about Paul and Barnabas, you know, that you didn't have to do these kind of ordinances. However, because they weren't Gentiles, they had to teach them about the history of the Jews. They had to teach them about Adam and Eve in the garden because Adam and Eve is the progenitors of all mankind. So they had to teach them these things about the Old Testament, about the law of heart ordinances, what it meant, how it was relevant, how Joshua fulfilled it. See, they had to teach them that because the Gentiles was like, well, why, why do we gotta, well, what do I care about this Hebrew stuff? I said, well, this, here's the relevancy of it. Adam and Eve, you see. The whole human race come from Adam and Eve. And through Adam, all of mankind fell. See? But through Joshua, all of mankind is made, you know, is, right. is given the opportunity to be saved. All right? We're, we're out of time here. But this is where, this is the beginnings of the Roman Catholic Church right here, what we just read. Because those people who were, you know, the Pharisees, they were saying, yeah, you know, we believe, you know, Joshua resurrected, but we also believe you got you to gotta do these cardinal ordinances. Mm -hmm. and, and, and hopefully in other lessons we'll show you how the, uh, how can I put it, the makeup of the Roman Catholic Church is based on the Levitical priesthood that operated within this tabernacle, which, which has been fulfilled. Because, see, we're not under a Levitical priesthood. Right. See, we're under this one. This is Melchizedek, see, king and high priest of Salem, who had no beginning or ending of days. And that's the true priesthood that we're under, an eternal priesthood, whom Yahshua Messiah has no successor. Okay? All right, we're out of time for the day. I hope, uh, but I hope, uh, at least I got through a little bit as far as Joshua and Yahshua. You know, Joshua is instituting, Joshua is fulfilling, and they're both one and the same. And, and our founder, Dr. Kinley, used to say this about this subject. He said that the mystery of Joshua the son of Nun being Joshua the Messiah is the greatest mystery that Yahweh ever perpetrated upon mankind. And it is. You try to tell an Orthodox Jew about Joshua the son of Nun, see how, see how he'll react to that. All right, but, but this is a great mystery, see. But now it is given in these last days, you know, to us, to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, to see, to see and explore and understand. And last but not least, to be saved. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, we're out of time. Yes, two minutes. Well, I, I'm out of time. I'm out of gas. <laughs> I feel like getting down. All right, so be safe, be healthy. Uh, we hope you all edify, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he truly is your only hope of glory. All right, and with those few words, hallelujah. All right, that concludes today's lectures. Uh, like I say on the invites, bring your questions. Come on over, sit. There's plenty of room here. Bring your questions. It can be answered through this panoramic vision that was given to Henry Clifford Kinley. You buy the pattern. There's no question that will stop us. 
You want to know the truth? Come on down. Okay? Be edified. You know? Be enlightened by the Holy Spirit. Okay, are there any announcements or anything? No? Uh, the the oh, okay. Just turn our eyes. What are some of the donations to? Oh, that's good. If you want to donate, uh, the reason why, because we're, we're reading here at this hotel, we do want to get a permanent place to stay. Uh, most of the stuff comes out of our own pockets to, to, to have this place here, uh, to have class, most of the, all the equipment and everything. But now that we're being a school, we're going to rely on, uh, on donations from the brethren or whoever wants to. And this is the address, so you could uh, copy it down or, or watch YouTube or Facebook and get the address down. Some people want to donate, and so now that we have a place, we can do it. And nobody gets, uh, I said, nobody gets paid here. It's free, okay? We donate our time because we love the gospel. We love the truth, okay? But in order for us to uh, sustain a place, we're going to have to do it on donations, okay? Yeah, hopefully one day we'll, we'll have to roll up the charts and take them out. We'll have a place to hang them, you know? Place to meet more than once, you know, maybe three times a day, or three times a week, like that, you know, a regular class. But until we get a place, and we rely on donations. Okay. So uh, with that, uh, we thank you for tuning in, all the brethren out there, uh, uh, the ones in uh, Baja California, Mexico, uh, Helen and uh, uh, I forgot her name. Karina. Okay, uh, also uh, Joseph Iles out there in Colombia. I talked to him a couple of days ago, a matter of fact, this morning. And uh, everybody, in, uh, well, I can't remember everybody's name, I'm getting too old. So let's all stand and be dismissed. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless with his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, Messiah, our Sovereign. Be now glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both for all time, now and ever. Let's all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.